Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to show you guys how to access your Nix cloud outside of your home network through tunneling. So let's get started. Now there are multiple ways to give access to your next cloud outside of your network. One that comes to mind that is the easiest way to set up would be tunneling through VPN. There are a couple of methods to do this switch, which I'm gonna be showing you each one. And there's also hosting it with your own domain. Now that's gonna be another video down the road. And that's the way I actually currently host my next cloud using a domain instead. But I did use all these tunneling methods before and I could tell you the ups and downs or the pros and the cons of each one. So let's jump into it. Now the first one, I actually made a video of it before and I'll leave a link on the top left, which is this website called Awesome Tunneling, which has all the resources for you to run your own tunneling software or run some open source software. Uh, check out his website, it's really good. And I'm gonna scroll down the list of stuff. Like I've used Telebit, uh, Tunnel Mole is brand new. I haven't tested it yet, but I've had tested uh, Telebit, uh, tunnel pajamas, which is the one we're going to be using today because I find this to be the easiest and there's a bunch down the list. Now, if you want to use commercial sources, they actually have listed here as well. Another one that we will be looking into today is also tail scale. Now, if you don't want to run the closed source version, you could actually run head scale, which is their open source version. And there's also like zero tier, which is the same as tail scale. And I'll explain that a little bit down the road. And then the last one we're going to be doing is WireGuard, running our own VPN. And that's the most complicated because you have to open your own port and also memorize your IP address. So unless you want to open that, you might want to check out the first two. As I said before, we're going to be checking out something called pajamas or tunnel.pajam.as if that's what you would say it. This is by far one of the easiest ways to set up tunneling without having to open any ports, especially if you're in a household where you don't have access to your router or you don't have any form of way to open any ports or forward anything. Uh, this is probably the easiest way, uh, second to tail scale. So it does line out the command that you need to run uh, to get this up and going. And that's basically it. You just have to run one command and it'll set up the tunneling for you. What I'm gonna do now is jump over to my mini Nix cloud, which is the video we set up earlier. And I'll leave a link for that as well. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. There you go. That's it's hpy at mini Nix cloud. And there you go. I'm actually testing this with the Raspberry Pi keyboard hub, which is pretty cool. I've actually never played around with their keyboard yet. It does come with uh, this mouse, uh, which is the Raspberry Pi mouse. And then this one acts as a hub. There's actually three port USB and this wire is actually detachable. It's a micro USB to a regular USB A. All right, so now that we're here, the first thing we need to do is actually make sure we have WireGuard installed on the server. So I'm gonna do sudo app install WireGuard and it's not installed, so I'm gonna install it now. And then after this, we then can run the command. Now also keep in mind that when you're using pajamas, it will actually create a HTTPS, but it will only forward to a HTTP tunnel. So we do have to enable the HTTP from uh, Nextcloud. And in here, you, all you have to do is just add this little configuration or the port 5080 but 280. It's up to you which one you want to use, but this is just fine because it's going to terminate it that way. And then from here, you could just run this command. So I'm going to copy this and it's going to create a file called tunnel.config on the current directory. It's up to you if you want to change the name of that, but that's fine. Tunnel.config is fine, but you do have to change this port over to 5080. This way I'll know to continue to your next cloud uh, port 80. And once you have that up, it will actually give you a brand new thing called a slug, which is what you could reference to to your tunnel. And it's gonna to go to port 5080. And we could test this out right now. So I'm gonna have my phone right over here. I'm gonna do HTTPS and then basically type that slug in, which is n tunnel pi jam as. Now it is able to connect to it, which is good, but it's saying it's untrusted domain, which is something that I just oversaw and I completely forgot, where you have to allow untrusted domains to access your next cloud. So we know that this is the actual URL that we need. So I'm gonna do a copy on this. So I don't have to type it again. Head over to my portainer, and then I'm gonna go into console, connect to it, go into the config file. I'm still not used to typing with this keyboard, but if you see on the screen, it actually got, uh, it's this folder right here, config, www, next cloud config. It's actually, you can do this manually. Uh, it saves itself over to 
um, the config folders, but you can go through this console as well. I will save it. So I'm gonna do nano config PHP, and then in here, trusted domains. You see how it says Nextcloud 5443? Uh, we're gonna add another one in here, uh, which is mini Nextcloud 80. 5080 and then we're going to add another one and this one's going to be that pajamas and we should be good with this entry in there so i'm going to save this and we don't need to reboot it it should save the connections so let's give that a try again and we're going to go back into our android phone and let's click it testing connection and there we have it now it's going to say security warning because the it is HTTPS, but it's not like let's encrypt or anything. So here we can actually log in. So I'm gonna log into my account. All right, so there we have it. Basically have all my files in here. It's logged into my next cloud and I could do whatever I need to do in this application using this tunneling method. Now, this tunneling method does work very well. I actually use it for quite some time, but the problem with this is that one, it doesn't know to refresh your IP if your IP changes. So if you've got a dynamic IP and it changes every month and it happens to be in that cycle, it doesn't know how to update it. So you will have to basically refresh the connection and then it'll grab your new IP. If you're thinking about relying on it and at the time of need when you actually need it and your IP changes, you won't be able to connect to it. So that was one of the problems I ran into with using pajamas. Otherwise, it's actually very, very stable and I never really had much of an issue other than that little bit. So that's one of the main problems I have with pajamas. Now, next up, we're gonna be looking into Tailscale. Now there are a few other services other than Tailscale, which is zero tier. And I think those are the two that I know of, but there might be more. Now, Tailscale is, I didn't even know this, but this was one of my issues when I was originally using it, is that it was only allowed one user up to a hundred devices. So meaning, for personal use, like on my own device, and I'm the only one using it, it's perfectly fine. I could reach it anywhere. You just need to log on to their service using the Tailscale client. But otherwise, uh, I was able to reach anything that I needed to. Once when my wife started using Nextcloud, now you have two users and I wasn't able to use Tailscale. This doesn't seem to be the case right now because it's up to three users and 100 devices. So honestly, this is actually not a bad move, but that was my first complaint about it, which is only one user. But now since it's up to three, I don't think I'm gonna run into a problem with that. Now there is another service called Zero Tier, which I heard is pretty good. I haven't personally used it because I actually like Tailscale a lot. But again, they have run into this problem. You have one admin and 25 nodes. So if you're looking into adding more users, again, Zero Tier would not be able to provide that unless you pay for the service or use Tailscale. Apparently you could use three. Now to set up Tailscale, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is actually head into the download and they'll give you this command. You can manually install it if you want, but they do have a script. If you don't trust it, you can you know, follow their steps on manually installing it. So what I'm gonna do now is paste this command, run Tailscale. It's gonna do literally everything that this will do aside from manually typing everything. So all you have to do is just wait. And yes, I am running on my Raspberry Pi. Now, all I have to do is Tailscale, up and it's going to give me a little input right over here to authenticate now make sure you're logged in somewhere in my case i'm logged in already and then it'll actually add the device for me once i type that in and all you have to do is just hit connect login successful and in your next cloud it should be successful and that is it that's all you really need and now if i do ipa it'll show me a tunnel which was the one that we were using for pajamas and it should show me another connection, which is tail scale right over here. And it gives me the IP address that I need. So now all I have to do is just log into tail scale with any device. So say this device over here, uh, you have tail scale installed. You sign into the device. Once you sign into tail scale as a device up on top, you can activate the connection. And from there, you can go into your next cloud, go into add a new account. And here you can use the 5443 or the 80 if you want. So here I could just type in the IP address that it's given me, which is 100.124.128.144. And then the port number, which would be 5443, hit yes, HTTPS. Or you could use HTTP, just remember to change the port number. Again, this is not trusted domain because you got the 100 in there. 
So we will have to go back into Nextcloud, go back into the config and jump over here and literally add that extra bit. So we're gonna go to three and type in that IP address, which is 100. I'm just gonna grab it from here because I'm not gonna remember. Paste that in here, close that up. And now I should be able to access it again. So I'm gonna go over here, try it again. And there you go. Once you add it into a trusted domain, you're good to go. And now I'm gonna log in. Well, I'm gonna not go through this process again because we already got connected to this front screen, which means you're able to log into your own uh, next cloud. Now this method, like I was saying earlier, is when I was using this, it was perfectly fine up until when I needed to add more users, but it doesn't seem to be the problem right now. So I do recommend using Tailscale, which is a much easier approach. You don't have to open any firewall ports. All you have to do is just log in your account and then log into the program or the client. And you can get the client for anything, Android, iPhone, uh, PC, Mac, everything. So um, Tailscale seems to be my best approach right now. And to be honest, I use Tailscale a lot for everything. Tailscale is just so convenient to open up a WireGuard connection or a WireGuard VPN and tunnel into wherever I need to tunnel. So instead of having to open multiple ports to do certain things, I could just install Tailscale to something and get that working. Technically, I use Tailscale as my backup connection in case my IP changes or something goes wrong and Tailscale is always up to date with the connection, so I'm good. So I do have like a little VM with Tailscale installed and then I could pop in if I need to reconfigure something in my network outside of my network. So yeah, very good service. Now, next up, we have just a plain old WireGuard setup. Now you do need to have access to your firewall and actually be able to forward the port that you need. But the software that we're gonna be using is so simple. So in here, we're gonna go back into our portainer and we're gonna go over to app templates. And all you have to do is just search for WireGuard and it's gonna have something called WireGuard server. Now this actually installs something called WG Easy, which is a very easy GUI front end for you to configure WireGuard. And I, this is what I use personally. Now you do have to do a little bit of setup over here. Uh, first, you need to know what your WireGuard host is. This could be anything. Uh, this is just gonna help you set up the configuration files. So it could be anything you want. It could be your external IP, which you should be able to get running what's my IP on Google or something. If you have a domain name, you can actually set that in. Uh, like I said, this is just for your configuration files. So if I do one, two, three, four, my configuration files will have that. Now you gotta enter a password for the front end. So I'm gonna just use the password Raspberry. Again, change that password. Don't use Raspberry. It's just easier for me to remember and it's long enough to bypass any eight character restrictions. Next is your WireGuard port. This is the port that you actually need to open up in your firewall and forward. So this is the port that you need. And then you have your default DNS. You could use 1.1, which is Cloudflare, or you could use 8.8.8 .8 if you want for Google. And then your WG default address, you can change this to what you want. Internally, it's gonna be 10.8.0.1, then .2, then .3, depending on the device. And WG allowed IPs. This, if you want to just have WireGuard allow for internal network use only, you would change this to your internal scheme. So it would be 192.168.1.0 slash 24. So what that means is when you have WireGuard connected, anytime you type in 192.168.1, it'll actually forward that traffic through your WireGuard and every other traffic will be just be going through your normal internet. Now, if you want everything to go through WireGuard, so everything is encrypted through your house and then out, you could do 0.0.0.0 slash 24 and that will forward any bit of traffic through your WireGuard connection this way everything's encrypted. So if you're at a Starbucks, this will be the best way because it'll encrypt all the traffic. Once you're done with this, all you have to do is just deploy the stack. It's pretty quick. It'll set up everything that you need and get everything up and running. And then I'll show you to the UI. Now I'm not gonna show you how to forward your ports because everybody's ports are different. You might have like an optimum where you have to go into the web GUI. You might have a nick your firewall and then you could go in there and then change whatever. So there is a website called portforwarding.com and that one will show you kind of the gist of how you could change your port forwarding. But I'm not gonna show you this on this video, but the point is you need port forwarding and you need to port forward uh, 51820. Now I'm gonna jump into the front end of this and this is where we set the password. In my case, it would be Raspberry. Uh, here we have the front end GUI. Now all we have to do is just add a new client and we're gonna call this phone, create. And it, you could do two ways actually, to show the QR code 
or you can actually just download the config file depending on what system you're using this on. So say I have this on my config, like a QR code. All I have to do is go into my WireGuard. Again, this is my other phone, so it's a little bit easier to view, but yeah, my WireGuard connection, hit the plus button, scan the QR code. I'll have the little scanner up and ready. Once I scan it, it's gonna ask me for the tunnel name and I'll just call this phone one. And it doesn't matter because I already have a tunnel to my house. So I'm gonna create the tunnel and it's gonna give me that information. I could open it up and it's gonna list all the information that I have over here. So remember I changed the IP, the endpoint to one, two, three, four, and you see the configuration file shows as is one, two, three, four. It reflects what you adjusted that. So from there, that's what you wanna set your public IP or your home IP address to be. So this way it knows where the endpoint is to connect. Otherwise, you can just activate the connection and use that to connect to your next cloud using the local IP address of whatever your next cloud is. Now, I'm not gonna really show off the WireGuard connection. You guys get the gist of just the two other tunnelings. This video is already getting too long, but you get the idea. But you do need to use your local local IP, so it's not 100.28 or something like that. It's 192.168 to whatever your next cloud is. All right, so in all seriousness, uh, there are some risks involved. If you're gonna run the pajamas version of tunneling, there are chances that somebody might be able to find your slug and access your next cloud. Same goes with WireGuard because you are exposing a port. WireGuard is not as dangerous as exposing a normal HTTP port because you do have to have some sort of authentication just to get through the WireGuard, but still, you are exposing exposing yourself to some sort of danger and either using pajamas or wire guard. Now, do you remember uh, two-factor authentication, the brute force app that I was talking about from the last video, and you can even also lock down stuff by geolocations. Now, one of the things I didn't mention about WireGuard is that I use WireGuard a lot on my phone, on every device that I have just to connect to my house for that secure connection. But long story short, when I was vacationing overseas, um, it actually thought my house was in Korea because I was using WireGuard. And when I got back, uh, everything was Korean ads. It's just one of those things that I ended up having to reboot everything, change the IP address because I wasn't able to access a lot of stuff because it was thinking it was Korea. So WireGuard did mess with my network a little because of the whole DNS issue. Anyway, long story short, if you do travel a lot, WireGuard will mess with the home network. Now out of the three methods, I kind of think tail scale is the best because the tunneling is locked behind an account and a client where you do need to have some sort of access to login and then you expose that network to that particular login. So it's not just exposing it to internet. So for the three methods that I mentioned, I would say tail scale would probably be your best bet and the safest. Then you have your wire guard, which you can protect and lock down. And then the last one will be pajamas, but it's the easiest way. And on the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how to do this using just the domain name. This way we don't have to go through any tunneling services. And again, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated because you do have to open up ports just like you did with WireGuard, but it's not as difficult. We do have to create a self-signed certificate and a few other things, but otherwise, yeah, I'm gonna show, be showing you that on the next video. Now, if you have any questions about this video or use other services other than the ones that I mentioned, I'll list it down in the comments below because I wanna check them out as well. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And then same my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.